There is an art to combat, an unparalleled beauty. There are warriors who move like a gentle breeze, strike with the precision of a sniper rifle, but with the elegance of petals landing on a stagnant pond. For these warriors, it is just as important to kill your enemy as it is to maintain your grace and elegance. Any brute can swing a sword and cut down his foe, but a warrior is more than a brute. They are refined, they are poised, and they are beautiful. The Nusha and Faranar embody all this. Dancers of death who wield the strange and exotic hook swords, they are the deadly assassins of the Wulen. When Anusha enters battle, they rarely strike head-on, but instead move themselves and their opponents to and fro, striking in unconventional ways and turning an opponent's defense and instincts into their weaknesses. But who is Anusha? What are they based on? Let's find out. Welcome back to Heroes in History, where we take a look at all of For Honor's heroes and discuss who they are most likely based on and decide if they do their counterpart justice. And today, we are taking a look at the Anusha. To begin, let's start with who the Nusya are in For Honor and see if we can draw any parallels to a possible group. Unfortunately, like many of the Wulen, the For Honor lore doesn't really give us much to go on. All I was able to dig up is that they were female bodyguards during the Chinese Civil War, and they are usually unruly, doing things on their own terms and having problems with authority. This, unfortunately, gives us little to go on. Their name is even less helpful. Nusya is the combination of two characters, Nu meaning woman or female, and Tia meaning hero or warrior. So, literally translated, Nutsia means woman warrior. Sad to say, but I don't think the Ferrano developers gave Nutsia very much to work with in terms of a lore or presence. But, that doesn't mean we can't draw anything from her. Actually, there are a few clues we can use. Nutsia, unlike the other ladies in Ferrano, besides Nobushi maybe, tends to wear plenty of different makeup patterns, and likes to style her hair. Her various makeup styles actually reference Chinese opera and stage performances. Even further evidence of this is seen in her execution by Mao Ni, or White-Haired Girl, which is a reference to a Chinese opera production of the same name. Her movements in the execution are also similar to the mincing and delicate movements of female Chinese stage performance. Her wide circular swinging of her arms into the strike is quite familiar, and her seeming to dance with each motion is striking. Some of her emotes are also very dramatic. Her bread dance, pay attention, you didn't see that, and juggling are all meant to draw attention and put on a performance. Her other emote, Liang Qiu, is a reference to the Chinese legend of the butterfly lovers, a popular drama in China. She even minces around flapping her hook swords like butterfly wings. So what can we draw from her behavior, looks, and moves? Well, we can learn two things about Nuxia. One is that she has a flair for the theatrics and drama. And two, she has close ties to Chinese opera specifically, usually around folk tales and legends, actually. Well, this might actually be more helpful than we thought. In fact, little did we realize her name, while we wrote it off earlier, was a clue. Nusia may mean female warrior, but if we replace the N with another letter, it becomes a name for one of the most popular Chinese fantasy genres in the world. Wuxia. Yes. I believe it is safe to say that Nusya is probably based on the Wuxia heroes of legends, operas, and literature. Now, what is Wuxia? Wuxia literally means martial hero or martial warrior, so a Wuxia is essentially a martial arts hero. It also refers to a form of Chinese fantasy literature that originated in early Chinese history but became more popularized in the 1950s thanks to the Tolkien of Wuxia literature, Zhen Yong, who has written the majority of popular Wuxia literature. It was he who established the typical tropes and commonalities of wuxia literature. It is from his work that most wuxia stories get their basis. Some of his more popular stories have been the Condor Hero series, The Book and the Sword, and Fox Volant of the Snowy Mountain. But his work inspired other authors and creators to establish their own wuxia stories in books, movies, and yes, Chinese opera. A very famous example you're likely familiar with is Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. This is a prime example of the wuxia genre of literature. So, what does a wuxia legend or story involve? The content will vary, but true wuxia stories usually have a few things in common. 
In the traditional wuxia stories, the tale often takes place in medieval China during the Song, Tang, Yuan, Ming, sometimes even Qing dynasties. While this is a traditional setting of wuxia, and many would argue removing this factor makes it no longer wuxia, I would argue that, so long as the story follows similar tropes and themes to wuxia, it can still be counted among wuxia stories. Wuxia author Wina Poon even stated that the closest example of an English wuxia would be Robin Hood, or Batman. Now, the story will follow a hero who is not wealthy and usually of lower class, someone most people would probably not notice or even care about. This person would behave much like a knight errant. In fact, you could very easily compare wuxia legends to knight tales, as the wuxia warrior is often quite similar to a knight. They follow a strict code of martial chivalry, duty, respect for others, and fighting for justice and righteousness. The wuxia hero is usually trained by a very strong master, and they have learned unique or powerful martial skills from that master. But he or she is not alone, for in wuxia legends, there is an underground world of martial arts called the Jiang Hu, or the world of martial arts. This world of martial arts is essentially a society of people who train in martial arts under various schools, masters, and training disciplines. Quite often, this world is filled with conflict and turmoil, as the different schools fight for supremacy to prove their way of the warrior is the best way. In any case, the wuxia is on a journey in search of something. Sometimes it's to prove that they are the strongest or their school is the strongest. Maybe it's to find their family or loved ones. To protect someone, maybe. To get revenge for someone. Or to just be a vigilante. Whatever the case, they don't tend to follow societal rules as often as they do the self-imposed rules of the Jiang Hu. The techniques learned by Wuxia warriors are usually very much martial arts disciplines, but quite often they're even more fantastical. The warriors must learn secret and supernatural techniques involving qi, an internal energy that can be developed through meditation and training that, through which, the warrior can achieve supernatural feats. They might learn to jump farther, run faster, or nearly fly with the help of their qi. They might learn special pressure point strikes that, when used correctly, will paralyze or kill a foe just by poking them in specific spots. Remember this scene from Kung Fu Panda? Shifu taught you well. But he didn't teach you everything. This is an example of that pressure point style. And yes, as you likely deduced, Kung Fu Panda could potentially be considered a wuxia story. The elements are all there. A warrior involving himself in the Jiang Hu, world of martial arts, wants to learn under a specific master. Though different, he develops his own unique means of fighting. He's not of high status, nor is he of the upper class. He overcomes a great evil or rival through his training, and through the use of both martial and supernatural feats, and each following story after the first one is usually following the same formula, discovering something new about himself to overcome an even greater evil. These elements are common in Wuxia. Other good, less obvious examples might be the American fighting movies Undisputed, following Yuri Boyka, a Russian fighter who fights his way through various underground martial arts tournaments to prove he's the world's best fighter and to win his freedom. Another good example would be Eat Man, another great example of a Wing Chun fighting master who takes down other various martial arts disciplines throughout his movies in order to achieve something. Sometimes it's against karate masters from Japan, other times it's fellow kung fu masters, and at other times it's American CQC specialists. Whatever the case, Eat Man climbs his way through the world of martial arts using his own unique style and techniques. Now, you'll notice that most of these movies I've mentioned lack the supernatural element that's popular in most Wuxia stories. But in more modern versions, the creators attempt to make the story seem more grounded to make it more believable. This doesn't mean supernatural feats can't be involved, though, particularly in martial arts anime, like Ranma One Half, where a boy who's trained in his family school called Anything Goes Martial Arts, where he must confront and battle other martial arts schools and styles to maintain the supremacy of his own way of combat, while also protecting the people he cares about. All the while, he's trying to cure his own affliction brought on by his training. Very common of Wuxia. In this show, the supernatural element is definitely there, such as using a technique to cause a tornado, a pressure point move that can remove memories, and even a fist of the ice bear. No, no, I'm not joking. But it's that crazy silliness that makes it not only wuxia, in my opinion, but a ton of fun. Almost everything that Ranma encounters is some kind of martial art. Martial arts dining, martial arts ice skating, martial arts 
food delivery. Everything's a martial art, and Ranma must learn how to overcome it using his own skills, styles, and understandings of the martial world. As he likes to say, if it has to do with martial arts, he can do anything. And that's very typical of a wuxia heroine, or hero. That's why they call the golden pair of martial arts figure skating after all. Hey, martial arts? I can do that. If it's got martial arts in it, I can do anything. We've got him, Akane. We can beat him for sure now. Mm-hmm. Just as soon as you learn how to stand up. <sighs> Next time you watch a martial arts movie or anime, check to see how many wuxia elements are involved and see how much they take from them. But, now that I've bored you to tears with all this wuxia talk, how does any of this relate to the Nuzia? Firstly, whether intended or not, Ubisoft not giving her much of a background actually plays in her favor for this, as we are forced to guess or speculate on her origins and where she learned how to fight. Some Wuxia stories do not give a lot of background on the hero. Sometimes, it's very vague. And in this case, Nuzia is more of a dancer or performer than anything else, but she incorporates this showmanship and dancing into her fighting. Though her look and actions might imi imitate the Chinese opera, the Chinese opera was a great growing place for the world of Wuxia, as many great Wuxia stories were told in opera productions. Her dance-like fighting is also very similar to what Wuxia entails. Real martial arts is fast, brutal, and usually very short, with two combatants trying to overpower the other through ferocious blows or grappling. But in Wuxia, the martial arts flow or move like they're dancing, dodging, spinning, pirouetting, and using exotic motions to win. While many wuxia stories involve men, this has changed much in recent years. Author Wina Poon has been working to create more female wuxia, and they can be very unique and interesting tales to follow. Examples like Mu Gu Ying, a cultural legendary hero of northern China, who is a master of martial arts and military leader, who helped bring an end to the Catan forces threatening her. There is also more recently Yin Niang, an assassin who kills corrupt politicians and wrongdoers from the 2015 movie The Assassin. Now, I'm sure some might be asking, would Mulan classify as a wuxia? Well, in the sense that she's a martial hero, yes, but her story doesn't really fit well within the tropes we previously mentioned. She's not a master martial artist, nor is she from a world of Jiang Hu, nor is she wandering without station just to right wrongs. Actually, the new live-action Mulan is closer to a wuxia story given her supernatural feats, her natural affinity for martial arts, the use of supposed chi, and her adherence to honor, righteousness, and justice. Unfortunately, that movie was crap, and we won't be talking about it anymore. Back to Nuxia. Her hook swords are also a decent connection to the Wuxia. Wuxia warriors sometimes carry a weapon with them and master this weapon specifically. Usually it's a sword, like a Xi'an, but the weapon could be a staff, a spear, or maybe even a fan. But hook swords are a possibility. In fact, the strange and complex nature of the swords makes them difficult to master, and as such, a warrior who can master them must be quite skilled demonstrating a martial proficiency without even having to begin fighting. The swords have four functional parts. The back of the blades, which can be used like a normal sword. The hook portion, which can be used to hook and disarm. Or to hook people, for that matter. The guards, which are bladed as well and can be used for blocking or punching like a knuckle duster. And the bottom dagger portion, which can be used for in-close jabs. Knowing the functionality of all these parts is essential to mastering them. True masters can even increase the range of their weapon by hooking the swords together and swinging them in an arch that increases the reach of the weapons and allows for optimal distancing. Take Jet from Avatar The Last Airbender, a Vagamod Peter Pan-like figure who fought against the corrupt Fire Nation. In a world where people can bend the natural elements, he had no such powers but proved he was dangerous with his hook swords. The hook swords are elegant, powerful, and provide attacks from various ranges. Plus, the hooks can be used for disarming an enemy. Some wuxia stories involve the warrior refusing to kill their enemy, and a weapon that can disarm an opponent could be ideal for that. This leads us into Nuxia's fighting style. Nuxia is very unconventional. She has dodge and striking capabilities like any other fighter, but she's the only fighter in the whole roster with a literal trap capability, the ability to strike, an, strike through an opponent's guard. Her unconventional fighting style and her ability to capitalize on the instincts of an enemy is not so different from wuxia heroes. Quite often, the wuxia hero is not superimposing in appearance, and their fighting arts might be seen as laughable or unintimidating. But it is when they reveal the unconventional and even bizarre means of fighting that they employ that their true terror is revealed. Nuxia is capable of this through her trap abilities, applying new pressure on an enemy through something that works against their prior understanding. The For Honor player learns to instinctively guard against attacks, but Nuxia counters the very survival instinct players latch onto. Now, granted, in the current meta of the game, her trap attacks are nearly useless against most heroes, and she is in dire need of an update, but we're not here to talk about her current status in the game. 
Nusia demands your attention and your respect. She's a dancer, an entertainer, a simple girl. She wields weapons that most would consider silly or useless in real war. Her fighting style is odd and unconventional, but that's also her charm. If I may be allowed to gush slightly here, Nusia is exactly what I was looking for in For Honor. In the modern discourse, it's so common to see the strong woman archetype thrown into every novel, movie, or TV show. But in the end, these women are simply doing masculine things and professing it as strong womanhood. They do not use their feminine qualities, nor do they embrace something unconventional to be strong. Merely just do manly things while not being men. But Nusia is elegant. She's graceful. She displays feminine charm and personality in everything she does. Even her basic attacks are designed to be somewhat graceful and eye-catching. And her fighting style isn't about hitting harder with unblockable attacks or pushing enemies around with sheer brute force. She takes advantage of opportunity, uses cleverness and cunning to seek openings, and forces the enemy to fight on her terms by isolating enemies and ripping them apart. She's become a legend in her own right. Perhaps there is no direct historical warrior or group that we can directly connect to her. But I also think that perhaps we don't need to. Nusha isn't based on a real world warrior. She's based on legends, heroes, martial warriors who shape the way we view fighters and combat today. The Eastern version of the Western knight errant. She fights for higher purposes. She doesn't adhere to the conventional fighting style or rules that others might. She lacks usual weapons, but makes up for it with amazing fighting prowess. She is a warrior that we do not expect, but she's like no other. And at the end of the day, isn't that exactly what heroes are made of? Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will see you in my next one. Take care. My little baby off to destroy people. <laughs>
damn it. Your team is breaking. Oh no! You captured Zone C. Sir, you don't meet a girl like that every dynasty.